This is the plaintiff, Sharon. She says she sold her golden retriever to the defendant, and he only paid her half the money he owes her. She instantly regretted selling her dog to the defendant and doesn't really even want the money he owes her. She wants her dog back. She's suing for $500, the amount owed, or the return of the dog. This is the defendant, Bradley Noel. He says the woman threatened him, saying she was going to call a lawyer to get her dog back, and she was rejecting his payment of $500. His kids have bonded with this dog. There's no way he's giving it back to her. And if she doesn't want him to pay her the 500 bucks he owes her, then he won't. He's accused of a doggy downer. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she is heartbroken that she sold her beloved dog to the defendant and she wants him back. But the defendant says there's no way he's giving the dog back because everyone is in love with him and a sale is a sale. It's the case of a real doggy downer. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Sharon, you are suing Mr. Noel for $500 or, and your preference is that he return your dog to you. Tell me what happened. On August 13th, I sold my dog, Gio, for $1,000. What kind of dog was Gio? A golden retriever. And why were you, how old is Gio? Then he was six Six and a half months old. Why were you the selling? <laughs> it's such a long story. Um, I bought Gio um, a bone, and he he enjoyed it. He loved it. He had it. He chewed it. He was playing with it. That was uh, Wednesday. Wednesday night, he woke me up, and he had diarrhea really bad. And I called the vet. I explained what had happened. He said that them bones, because they have chemicals or whatever it is to preserve them, that it will give a dog diarrhea. Okay, so it was all over the house. I was cleaning, shampooing the rug, washing the, I'm doing everything. My son called, because my son calls me every day. My son called, said, what's going on? I told him. Okay, you know, then... Well, you know, the dog's a lot of work. You're too old. You shouldn't be taking care of the dog. Can I you ask know, you a question? A Can I, how old are sure. you? Sure, 70. And he thinks at he 70, said, you're too old to take care of a dog? A puppy. Said I should have got an older dog. A puppy's like having a baby. And it just was going on and on. At the moment, Whatever. you agreed with him, didn't you? I didn't know what to do. I had called my daughter-in-law to tell her because she has a dog. And to tell her, don't ever buy them bones. So then she says, well, you know, you're t again, you're too old. You know, okay. you're but having Ms. a puppy. It's like having Ms. a Sharon, baby. Ms. Sharon, let's, uh, at the bottom line is at some point you did agree with them. You just regret it, right? What? Huh, sure, I did regret it. Okay. So then everything happened so fast. Within like a half an hour, uh, Brad called to say he wanted to get Geo, and I, oh, okay, I guess. So he came, he gave the 500. So the deal was, was that he would give you 500 on that day, and then he would pay you the other 500 by when? Next weekend. Okay. And what happens between the first 500 and the second 500? Nothing happened. Well, I, yeah, something happened. You regretted selling Geo. Oh, so then I text to say that I made the, I made a huge mistake. Pretty much, a, I had to come and get Geo. And she texted me back and said no. <laughs> so that was that. All right, Mr. Noel, tell so me then, when. Tell me how this goes down. You buy the dog and then uh, you pay half, and then you're supposed to pay the other half by when? Uh, there was really no set date, but I told her that I would give her the other half uh, either the week after uh, from the purchase of the dog or the following week. Okay, and then uh, what happens? You get a call a few days after you pick up the dog. First of all, you pick up the dog, you bring the dog home. How many kids do you have? 
I have two. I've got an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. I'm okay. a three-year-old. All right. So you get the dog and then you get a phone call a few days later from her saying I've made a huge mistake. Uh, no, I get a, I get a couple of text messages. She's giving me, uh, tips on how to care for the dog. Uh, she's telling me, uh, she's going to send me his allergy medication and we're interacting pretty smoothly. And I could tell that she was going through some separation anxiety from the dog. And because I go through certain situations with the mother of my children, I know what it's like to be separated from your kid because that's pretty much what the dog is. It's, it's her kid. And now it's my third kid. <laughs> so, uh, I made arrangements with her to, and I said that, you know, if you're feeling, you know, if you're comfortable and open to it, I can bring the dog to you all the way to Delaware, like once or twice a month, and you can spend a weekend with you because I understand what you're going through. And I want to know. I think that's very sweet of that. you to offer. Never in your life do that. Yeah, I, I've so, so I've learned. <laughs> no, 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 no. Even if she had said that's a great idea, you would never in your life do that because I get those cases when then the person doesn't return them. So d you never in your life do that if you expect to see the dog again. All right, so go on. So um, I made, uh, so the way my finances are set up, I can't just, you know, willy nilly pop up 500. So it had to be a couple of, uh, a, a couple of days. So I'm getting messages from Leah saying that- uh, Who's Leah? Her mom says, uh, that is her daughter-in-law. Okay. Uh, she's saying that um, she doesn't understand what's going on. Everything seems to have gone so smoothly, but her uh, mother-in-law has, inst has instructed her not to accept any payments. All right. um, from that point on, it was unto my understanding if she's not accepting any payments and she's, you know, let's see the right first, the text on August 16th, Sophie, who is Sophie mm -hmm. to you? That is my girlfriend. I my hope wife. you understand. I know you will understand how I feel. I am heartbroken. All I do is cry. I made a huge mistake. Please, please. I need to get my boy back. I can't sleep. And all I did is cry. You only had him a few days. I'm sure you will get another puppy and love him the same. I will refund your deposit and I will come pick him up. I'm so, so sorry, but I just can't go on without him. Please tell Brad I'm so sorry for any inconvenience. I would like to pick him up today. And then your girlfriend responds, I'm so very sorry, Sharon, but I have to say no. We're already very happy to have Gio and we'd be absolutely devastated to part with him. Your family advertised your intent to rehome Gio on Facebook. We agreed on a deposit and another payment of 500 this week as full payment. As soon as you got back to us, we drove to Delaware to pick him up. We've been looking for a pup for months and he immediately became part of our family. Giving him up would not only break my heart, but also the children's hearts. I'm really sorry you miss him, but we're not willing to give him up. Yeah, uh, she... Regretted giving up the dog from gate. She called back. She, they, her family offered a five thousand dollars to get the dog back. And five thousand dollars. Yes, her son called back and said, "I will pay five thousand dollars to get this dog back." Oh my and gosh! God bless him. Yeah, that's what I said. And you know, now you can. You know, there's, it, there's a little I bit more. Just to this. Can't. I just You know, the only thing I'm <laughs> sure of is that Gio is most loved. Yeah, there's no question. There is yeah, love for Gio, yeah, Gio everywhere. So they offered you five thousand dollars, not uh, five hundred, but five thousand, and you said no yes, because that would then yes. break your children's hearts. Uh, my children and mine. My and baby yours. too. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Oh God bless your son. Your Honor, at that point, because my son said he would pay any price just to have me stop crying. Because, I know. Your you know, son was, loves you. Mm -hmm. He he felt like yeah, the dog was too yeah. much for you. He gave you advice born out of love. And then he <laughs> couldn't believe how that came back to bite him in, in the hind leg. And he uh, yeah. and then he just would do anything to erase your pain. You have a son that loves you very much. God bless him. Oh, wow. And then Mr. Noah wouldn't take it, which means they love Gio very much. That is correct. Okay. All right. So where are we now? So we have the executed sale of a dog, but why do you still owe her the 500, Mr. Noel? Because well, she says at some point she said, okay, give me the 500 then. And then you didn't give it to her. So talk to me about that. That's, that's not true. I sent over, like I said, I can't just take money out of my finances. I zelled her daughter, uh, her daughter-in-law's Leah, five hundred dollars, and it was denied. And uh, so I looked at my messages, and I was like, "What's going on?" And she said, "I was advised not to accept any payment from you." Right. And I so said, here's well, a text from from uh, the person you were dealing with. Hey there, I'm not sure what is going on. My mother-in-law told me to decline any payments. I don't know what you guys are going through. I don't want anything to do with it. She asked me to do her a favor and find somebody who wanted a dog. That's what I did. I made the post on Facebook. I told her I don't want to be involved in this. I'm extremely upset about it. I don't know what the problem is. And you explained she wants 
the dog back, but my family doesn't want to part with him. Yeah. Okay, but then now, why haven't since then, all this stuff is going on in August, since then, why haven't you paid the $500? I, w- I was called and told that she's taking me to court. Okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't But you know you owe the $500, right? I, yeah, I told her, I said, yes, I will make, I sent her a message and said, I will make the $500 available to you once I have it. Yeah, but then she had to file a case because you didn't pay her. No, she filed the case because she, she was under the impression that she was going to get her dog back. When did she file the That's case? That's what she told me. She said, I'm going to sue you for this dog. Yeah. And then once she started getting upset at me, I started, I was like, well, I don't, I, I know I owe you this money. I want to give you this money, but why are you attacking me? She's stalking my house. She went around my house and told me what my property looks like. I was like, wait, wait, say that again. I said she was around my property. She was like, I know what your house looks like. I'm like, why are you even, you're in another state. How did you even, I don't get it, but. Wait, I get I it. Get it. Yes. Wait, so did you go to his property? No. And- After I did not get the money, I went to the police department and told them what happened. When I was leaving the police department, I was looking for my way back to the turnpike. And as I was passing, it said his street at his street. I rode past it because I wanted to see. He said he had a a fenced-in yard, and I wanted to see. I just rode past it and then went back on my way to the turnpike. Yeah, but how does he know that? I I was not stalking. Right, but how does he know that you even rode past it? Did you tell him I know what your house looks like? Because I called him and told him. I went to the police department. I said, and they told me I had to go to Delaware. So that would mean you would have to come to Delaware to the court. He started screaming and yelling and said, I'm not coming to court in Delaware. My wife's not coming to court in Delaware. And my dog's not coming to court in Delaware. And I hope you make it to court. I said, are you threatening me? And he hung up the phone. That was the conversation. What I see is the deep, deep regret that she has, uh, which you understand, that she didn't. Yeah. She wishes she didn't part with Gio. You, Mr. B- yes. Mr. Noel, are 100% correct. It's a consummated sale. And I'm sorry that you have regrets, Ms. Sharon, but it's time for you to think about a different dog because you sold the dog and you don't get to go back on the contract. But you, Mr. Noel, also don't get to go back on the contract. So once you got sued, the right thing to do was send her the 500 bucks and then just, you know, figure it out after that. I mean, um, either way, I'm going to I am not going to issue an order ordering Mr. Noel to return the dog to Miss Sharon. That's not going to happen. It is irrelevant that it's not in the best interest of the dog. It isn't, but it's, but that's, I'm not even considering that because dogs are property in the eyes of the law. And this is a sale fair and square, but you've got to go. And the only reason the second part of the sale didn't happen is because you didn't let it happen because you told her to deny the, no. the request. The, to deny the payment. It didn't happen. He didn't send the money. My You're not listening to me. Your daughter-in-law you sent him. But you have to think from the bank. Yeah. He never tried to make a payment. I'm not sure what is he going on. Did. My mother-in-law told me to decline any payments. I said that after. No, it was after. Okay. It, it doesn't matter. Ms. Sharon, you are that. correct. You are owed $500. And I am ordering you, Mr. Noel, to pay the $500. OK, because okay. it's inexcusable that then another two months passed. Because I got called to come here. OK, I'm ordering you <laughs> to pay her the five hundred dollars verdict for the plaintiff. Absolutely. Five hundred dollars. Good luck, folks. Absolutely. You look great, by the way, Judge. You're aging very nicely. Well, in a case that ends up with probably everybody agreeing here, the plaintiff is going to get her five hundred dollars back. Uh, Mr. Noel is going to have to pay that. And I'm Gabby, you're really willing to do it. Am I right, Mr. Noel? Absolutely. Absolutely. I told her I'd give her five hundred dollars as long as she stopped disrespecting me and having Karen moments for no reason. How is the dog now, by the way? The dog fitting in great with your family? Absolutely. The dog is fitting in amazing with the family. My sons love him. I love him. My uh, my girlfriend loves him. And we plan on being with him for a very, very long time. Well, good luck with him. Good luck with him. Ms. Sharon, let me ask you, you had him as a puppy. How long had you had him? Six and a half months. You really got attached to him. 
And I know we can all understand how you feel. What, what have you done since then to, uh, you know, to, to make yourself feel a little better? You're still missing the dog, I presume. I'm just missing my dog. Will you get another pup? I don't know. I don't know. Well, look, I feel sorry for you. I really do. But good luck to you. Um, get another Thank puppy. You know, puppies are full of love. Another one will help you out. Seriously. You would agree with that, Harvey, wouldn't you? I mean, Doug, look, as sad as this is, the plaintiff sold the dog and a sale is a sale. I mean, I hate to say this, I, but it is simply the law. The dogs are considered property. And once you sell it, it's gone for good. My advice, maybe the plaintiff can heal her heart by getting another puppy. That always seems to work in the end. What motivates you to work hard? Uh, I suppose in the early days of our careers would have been, you know, raising the children. Right. Now it's that we raise three divas and they cost a lot of money. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what motivates me to work hard on cases um, is the fact that every single case is the only case that that person has in all likelihood. And it's really, really important to them. So, and live, they're interesting. You so. want to live up to it. You, yeah. want, to, you yeah. want to do your best for them, right? right. right. Yeah, well, I, I used to think, I thought I had a really strong work ethic until I met you. So, and then it kind of shattered my illusions because you are relentless and, and you are a dynamo. You never, ever stop. That's not a good thing though. Like <laughs> I, I used to think that was a compliment and now I realize it's just like a malady, you know, that, that it's 1030 at night and I'm still trying to answer emails and do um, stuff. I, there's no wonder I can't sleep. Nah, it's a virtue though. Nah, no, it's a virtue for the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs>